For some reason, the media continues to play up the possibility of Andy Reid retiring while those closest to him continues to downplay it and shut the rumors down. So we gotta talk about the media seemingly lying about that. Eric Bieniemy visiting with the Chiefs the night before the AFC Championship game. Charles Aminahue set to have ACL surgery. Sky Moore surprisingly getting activated off of IR. Charvarius Ward appearing to come off as disrespectful toward his former team for no real reason and much freaking more. But First, how about those? First off, Chiefs Bids is back with another giveaway featuring this signed Patrick Mahomes Super Bowl 58 commemorative ticket. And it is incredible, but more on that in a bit because we have an update on the coyote that potentially attacked an NFL player. Well, there's a bunch of coyotes. One of them been a... Yikes. One of them been a player. We would like to hear Please. who it was. And therefore, the Chiefs sent defensive back Joshua Williams on an investigation to see who got bit. We had a player apparently get attacked by a wild coyote. Look. Wouldn't attack me, and if it did, that'd be a mistake. <laughs> Actually, Drew Tranquil, I could see him yeah, 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 getting yeah. some more early yeah, yeah, yeah. morning lunches in maybe and okay. just accidentally getting attacked. Well, looks like we found the guy, Drew Tranquil, who even weighed in about the attack himself. I didn't know uh, much about him at all prior to coming here. And it's been a whirlwind. Um, in the wise words of Marshawn Lynch, he's about that action. And while I definitely did not splice together those answers from a completely different interview, I'm sad to report that the coyote attack did not happen, at least to an NFL player. There's been four people bit by coyotes in this area over the last three months due to people feeding them, idiots, but the Henderson police actually said there's been no record or report of any incident involving a coyote or a professional athlete over the last few days. So sadly, we won't see any player from KC or San Francisco pop up on the injury report with rabies being listed as the illness. Do you have rabies? No. You have rabies? What? Chiefs offensive tackle Jawan Taylor just recently within the last few days lost his mother, or at least that's what the initial reports made us believe. And of course, if this were true, it would be very tough on him because he was reportedly very close to his mom, saying that he's a mama's boy through and through, always being with her growing up, and even to this day, staying in very close communication with her. Well, it looks like that report was misunderstood because Chief Safety Justin Reed took to the comment section of the post and clarified that it was Jawan Taylor's grandmother not his mom. Jawan's mother, Wendy, I believe is her name, even took to social media to let everyone know that she is indeed all right. I'm safe, I'm alive, and I'm well. She then went on to say that they suffered the loss of her mother-in-law and to keep them in prayer, with Jawan Taylor himself eventually taken to social media to let everybody know that there was some miscommunication somehow. So yeah, I just wanted to bring this up to give some clarity on the situation because again, the initial reports were indeed wrong. Either way though, loss is loss, which is sadly part of the cycle of life. And while Jawan is grieving the loss of a loved one and his grandmother and wanting to dedicate his performance of the Super Bowl to her, cornerback Legereus Sneed is celebrating the birth of his daughter. Sneed actually missed practice earlier this week due to his significant other having a baby girl, with Sneed letting the media know everything went fine and everyone is well. He just got in today and is ready to get to work, so let's freaking go. Then we got an update on defensive end Charles Aminahue, who tore his ACL in the AFC Championship game in Baltimore, and it looks like he's getting surgery to repair his ACL on Tuesday, February 13th, per a source from James Palmer of NFL Network, or at least that's how I read it based on his tweet, but Aaron Wilson just about an hour ago tweeted this out saying Chiefs placed Charles Aminahue on on injured reserve, he underwent successful surgery on his torn anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, I don't even know if I said that word right, this week. So he either is having surgery next Tuesday or he has already had successful surgery on his ACL. And whether it already happened or it's next week after the Super Bowl, he's still having ACL surgery pretty late. And it got me wondering, could this affect when he is able to play next season? And that's why I asked Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors, when could we realistically expect a Minihue back in full form next season? And he responded saying that there's a very good chance a Minihue starts on the pup and probably doesn't make his season debut until around week eight to week 10, assuming there's no setbacks in his recovery. It takes about nine months on average to return to play after an ACL repair. So while it's good news, Aminahue is getting his knee fixed up next week. The unfortunate news is that since this happened so late in the playoffs, we may not see him for roughly half of next season or maybe even longer, which is 
pretty rough considering he also missed six weeks this past season due to that suspension. However, I am definitely rooting for him and wishing him a full recovery. And as I read earlier, Charles Aminihue has been placed on IR, which means the Chiefs brought back wide receiver Sky Moore today per the NFL transaction wire. And honestly, I have no idea if he's going to be playing in the Super Bowl or not. He tweaked his knee weeks ago, was on IR, had his 21 day window to return and then tweaked it again at practice a couple weeks ago. And even if he does play, I'm not sure he's going to be a needle mover in the wide receiver room. But either way, you got to let me know your thoughts on the return of Sky Moore in the comments down below. Do you think he will be used in the Super Bowl? He did score a touchdown in last year's Super Bowl for what it's worth. Or are you of the mindset of heck nah, please leave him on the bench. Either way, he could be used as an emergency backup, but we're going to have to see how he progresses this week uh, as we get closer to the Super Bowl before we can even know if he's going to play or not. Next up, Chiefs Bids is back with another banger of a giveaway featuring this Patrick Mahomes signed Super Bowl 58 commemorative ticket in honor of the Chiefs once again making it to the big game. Chiefs Bids is available in the Bids portion of the official Chiefs app, which is where you're going to want to go to check out other items from former or current Chiefs players as well as game worn pieces you can bid on. This week they have a bunch of Super Bowl 58 commemorative tickets signed by a plethora of different Chiefs players, mystery boxes featuring a signed jersey, signed photo, as well as a random commemorative ticket from either the playoffs or the regular season. They even have a signed game ball from Patrick Mahomes as well as Travis Kelsey. Then they've got signed helmets, jerseys, footballs, photos, pylons, and the list goes on with this being updated all the time, so make sure to check back frequently to see what awesome memorabilia gets added in. And for your chance to win this Patrick Mahomes signed Super Bowl 58 commemorative ticket, you'll need to head over to Chiefs Bid's private Facebook page, link is in the description. Join the group after you get approved and accept the group rules. Comment HBT Chiefs on their featured giveaway post that you'll find pinned to the top of the group right here in the featured section. I will announce the winner using a random comment picker on Monday, the day after the Super Bowl, February 12th. So make sure to head on over to Chiefs Bids private Facebook page as soon as you're done watching this video and comment HBT Chiefs on the featured post for your chance to win. Did you know Eric Bieniemy drove up to Baltimore to be with the Chiefs the night before the AFC Championship game? It was reported that he went through a bit of the install with the offense at a Baltimore hotel the evening before they were set to face off against the Ravens and Patrick Mahomes noted that it gave some guys in the room goosebumps to have him back in the room with the team. Andy Reid said EB is still up for a couple of jobs and while KC's staff is currently full with no moves happening, if any, until after the Super Bowl, Andy thinks EB still has a bright coaching future ahead with Big Red personally being a big fan of his. I talked about this more in a previous video. You can see up here, but you cannot rule out an Eric B enemy return in some capacity to Kansas City next season, though I would say the chances right now are pretty low unless they carve out a specific position just for B enemy because I'm not so sure they are moving on from Matt Nagy. Okay, why do people keep lying and forcing unwarranted speculation about the Chiefs? I'm talking specifically about the potential upcoming retirement of head coach Andy Reid. Mike Florio has recently insisted more than once, he has reason to believe the Chiefs have the possibility of Big Red retiring on their radar. Ever since I caught wind of the possibility that the Chiefs are bracing for Reed leaving, not saying he will, but I think there's reason to believe the Chiefs have it on the radar screen. Florio went on to say that if a coach planned on retiring, of course he's not going to talk about it before the season's end because you don't want to take attention away from the team and shift it solely upon yourself as the head coach. And before you guys say, Cole, do not waste your time with Florio. Don't believe anything at all he ever says. Well, that's basically what I did when he reported back in May that Patrick Mahomes would once again be the highest paid player in the NFL by week one of the regular season. However, Mahomes did indeed become the highest paid player once again, albeit it was one day after the week two matchup against the Jags rather than by week one. So, Credit where credit is due, Florio was indeed correct about that. However, I am leaning towards Florio simply being off the mark on this one. I do not think Andy Reid hangs it up after the season, and the reason why we were even talking about this is because due to Florio circulating this info on repeat, it's got many around the league talking about it and asking these questions during the media appearances for the Super Bowl. Andy Reid himself said that when his parents were working, they told him, you will know when it's time, but right now, Andy is ready to go right now. He will know when it's time, but today is not the day, which honestly doesn't really give clarity about a future 
with the team, but both Clark Hunt, the owner, and GM Brett Veach basically shut those reports down themselves. Veach said he hasn't heard anything directly and doesn't buy the reports one bit. He would be shocked more than anybody as he talks with Andy Reid directly every day. Veach even said, quote, I think he's got a good chunk of time left. In this article from Adam Teicher of ESPN, owner Clark Hunt then said, I've heard the same reports uh, that you have and uh, have been surprised to see so many of them out there because I have no sense from Andy that he's ready to retire. I look forward to having Andy as our head coach for many more years. So the owner of the team says today he looks forward to having Andy Reid as the head coach for many more years. Brett Veach would be absolutely shocked if Big Red retired, yet Florio and maybe some others are surmising the Chiefs have to be bracing for the potential retirement just in case. Who are you going to believe, Clark Hunt and Brett Veach or Mike Florio. Andy Reid is 65 years old, yes, but Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll coached into their 70s. Therefore, I don't see any reason why Andy would hang it up, especially considering the Chiefs are in the middle of a dynasty. Four Super Bowl appearances in five years? It makes absolutely zero sense. But what do you guys think about this? Is Andy good for another three to five years in your opinion? Or do you think he could indeed surprisingly hang it up after this Super Bowl? All right, former Chiefs defensive back Charvarius Ward made some interesting comments in a recent presser that involved the Chiefs and it felt like it was an unnecessary low blow to KC's organization. As a reminder, the Chiefs traded for Ward from the Cowboys back in 2018 and then he was part of the Super Bowl 54 win, also playing in Super Bowl 55 as well before signing with the 49ers a couple seasons later before the 2022 season in free agency. Then just four months ago, Ward said KC saw the value of him and getting traded to the Chiefs was probably the best thing that happened to his career. Well, I guess a lot can change in four months because this week he had some things to say about KC in the lead up to the Super Bowl. Some were sort of good things, so don't get me wrong. He said Coach Reed made it clear he wanted Ward to remain in KC, but the Chiefs didn't pay and the 49ers had the money offering him the bag and he also then moved on to another Super Bowl caliber team. He then clarified he didn't think KC letting him walk in free agency was necessarily a mistake because they won a Super Bowl the year they let him go, so they are doing something right over there in KC. He then complimented Legereus Sneed, saying he will get his credit and due one day sooner rather than later. But next up, Charvarius was asked about the difference of being on the 49ers now compared to KC, and his answer was that it's better in every way possible. Oh, it's better over here. Better? Yeah, it's better over here. In what way is it better? Every way. Every way possible. I don't know guys, I feel like that was a bit of a low blow to the Chiefs organization, to the team that believed in him first, traded for him, and through the coaching efforts of one of the best defensive backs coaches in the NFL, Dave Merritt, helped raise him up to become part of the player he is today, which not only allowed him to play in two Super Bowls, winning one with the Chiefs, but it also helped elevate his stock enough to sign a three-year, $40.5 million deal with San Francisco in 2022. Of course, that's not all credit to the Chiefs. Ward is a good player and has continued to get better, but this answer just really surprised me. Sure, the money might be better in San Francisco, but the Chiefs have been to six straight AFC Championship games and have made it to four of the last five Super Bowls. Meanwhile, the 49ers have been to two in the last five, losing to the Chiefs in Super Bowl 54 and hopefully losing to them again in just a few days. Even Travis Kelsey heard about Ward's comments, which at least made him feel some type of way because today in his presser, he said that Ward's liking it over there a little bit more. So hopefully, quote, we can get this win and make him miss Kansas City just a little bit. Again, this isn't the biggest deal at the end of the day. I just found his answer a little bit odd and how he responded talking about the 49ers versus his former team in the Kansas City Chiefs. I understand rolling with your team, but I think millions of dollars may have clouded the accuracy of his answer. Much respect to Ward at the end of the day, but hopefully he leaves the field on Sunday with his only Super Bowl ring he owns still being the one he got when he was with the Chiefs. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Chiefs?